Hey there friends and enemies, Joper here again and today I want to talk about my favorite Stasis Titan build in Destiny 2, Season of the Wish, and I firmly believe that the Stasis Artifact perks this season are very underrated. I know the Solar ones are cracked, but in my opinion the Stasis ones are pretty good as well, especially when you talk about the Hail the Storm perk, Shattering Encased Targets and Stasis Crystals deals increased damage. Shattering Stasis Crystals releases Shards of Ice that damage and slow targets. So if you have a build that generates a ton of Stasis Crystals, this works out very, very well. Then we've got Pillar of Ice, defeating an encased combatant spawn Stasis Crystals, again, that's going to combine really well with the Hail the Storm perk. I'm also running for this build Argent Ordnance Overload Rocket Launchers just because I was running a Nightfall. I wanted to take down Overload Champions really easily and that is extremely effective. For this build, if you're using Verglas Curve, it's absolutely insane. You have your standard arrows and then you have your hail barrage final blows with his weapon grant stasis ammo or arrows your next hip fire shot will fire all of them in a single volley up to five so you can then just kind of destroy all the different stasis crystals slow enemies do increase damage it just works out really really well then we have the uh catalyst as well on this freezing or slowing a target grants this weapon faster draw time speed for a short period of time you see what we're doing just spam in them because it's a bow, especially in higher end content, you can pick off red bars and other minor enemies pretty easily. I'm also going to run the Cadmus Ridge Landscape. You can swap this up for another stasis exotic for the Titan, but for me, this is my favorite. Generating diamond lances creates stasis crystals on impact. Obviously that's great. Uh, when thrown with more crystals created by hitting bosses and vehicles so you can chuck those diamond lances at enemies you don't necessarily have to kill them to generate those crystals while using a stasis subclass and behind your rally barricade rapid precision hits and combatant final blows with a stasis weapon creates a diamond lance near you so essentially you can just use your barricade use Virgilus curve generate those uh, lances and just go to town if you're in easier content this is nice you can run around with one of those lances slam it down do a bunch of damage it is fantastic or if you're in harder content you can use that lance to hit the boss generate stasis crystals destroy the crystals slow the boss do more damage it's just a great loop in my opinion i'm also running cartesian coordinate as well as the roar of the bear although you can use any solar rocket solar uh, special weapon here as well it just depends on personal preference these are my favorites that's why i'm rocking them but they're not going to make up the bulk of this build they're just there for dps in case i need to do heavy damage to bosses and champions all that kind of good stuff as far as the subclass goes obviously we've got glacial quake i use my rally barricade to hide behind for my generating of the lances you've got shiver strike because it's your only option glacier grenade you're going to generate those stasis crystals and then Tectonic Harvest, Shattering a Stasis Crystal creates a Stasis Shard. Shard grants melee energy when picked up, so you're going to have melee energy all the time. It can also grant it for your allies as well, which is nice. And then obviously Diamond Lance, Shattered uh, Defeat Targets with Stasis Abilities or Weapons creates a, a Stasis Lance. This is also very nice to generate a lot of those lances as often as possible. As far as the Fragments, I'm going Chains, Conduction, Rhyme, refraction and then also rending so primary ammo weapons do increase damage to stasis crystals this was nice uh and of frozen targets which is huge defeating slow to frozen targets grants you class ability energy you want that as often as possible uh collecting those stasis shards grants a small amount of overshield essentially you can keep your overshield uptime pretty much 100 percent as long as you continue to defeat enemies then we got the stasis shards tracked to your position, which is huge. And then when you're near frozen targets or a friendly stasis crystal, you take reduced damage. So overall, it combines really well. As far as the mods, I've got the solar and also stasis siphoning, as well as heavy ammo finder, heavy handed impact induction, momentum transfer, melee damage resist, arc damage resist, solar reserves. You can swap some of those around depending on the type of content you're taking on. And then uh, solar weapon surge times two. You can swap those one of those for a stasis weapon surge if you'd like, but I feel like it's not really necessary because you're not using your verglass curve too often for heavy damage. And then finally, we've got distribution outreach time dilation. Essentially, like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna cast your rally barricade 
Take down a couple enemies with your Verglass Curve. Use the secondary, the hip fire, with your Verglass Curve to generate some of those uh, stasis crystals. You're going to have an uh, lance, Ice Lance there to either throw or use for whatever you want, essentially. Again, if you're in the coil or something that's easier in the beginning of that type of activity, you can use the Diamond Lances pretty freely to just launch yourself around the battlefield. It is a ton of fun. And then if you are playing, again, harder content, you can throw them. They're going to do a bunch of damage, generate those uh, stasis crystals, and it does create a nice loop. If you're not a fan of bows, you can swap this out for Chrysthesia or some other close range option as well instead of Verglass Curve. But for me, especially if I'm doing harder content or if I want a jack of all trades type of build, this works out much, much better. Because again, I'm going to be using this in Grand Masters. I'm going to be using it in the Master Dungeon, all that kind of good stuff. And I think it's going to be very, very effective. If you have uh, champions in the content, you can take down your unstoppables with your bow. You can take down the overloads with your rockets, even on higher level content. These are very, very quick and stunning enemies as well as defeating them. You also have, obviously, your stasis abilities, so you can shatter unstoppables as well as uh, slow uh, overload champions as well so it just combines really really well you don't really have anything for barrier champions although you can make yourself radiant by adjusting some of the artifact perks and use your radiant effect in order to take down those champions or you can swap out your weapon like i mentioned you can use like cryesthesia or something like that for a piercing sidearm if you need to but other than that that's the only swap you might have to make overall this build is just way too much fun. I know everyone sleeps on the Ridge Cap, uh, Ridge Lance Cap, in my opinion. I think it's phenomenal. One of my favorite exotics in all of Destiny 2. I think the Verglass Curve, as well as some of the other Stasis exotics, get slept on just a bit. Just because I feel like people don't think Stasis is all that good. Although they are pretty effective, in my personal opinion. I think there's a lot of reason to run them if you are a fan of of the playstyle, I do think Wicked Implement is pretty good. Uh, we have Cryosesia, which I think is really solid. And then Agar Scepter is also really, really good. So I don't know why more people don't run them. The other option you could swap out if you want to use a uh, Legendary Primary instead of a uh, Legendary or Exotic Primary, you can also switch out your Heavy for Winter Bite, which would also be very, very successful. Either way, you're going to want to generate as many stasis crystals as possible. You're going to want to use your diamond lances as often as possible because you're going to generate them really quickly. And overall, have fun with this build. I think it is very, very good. May not be max DPS, but it's a safe build. It's a comfortable build. If you want to play every piece of content in this game with it, you can even take it into PvP if you want to be super annoying. But other than that, my name is Joe, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Helps me out tremendously. Shows you want to see more Destiny 2 content from me going forward. I have a few more builds in the work that I think are underrated or slept on this season. So definitely stay tuned for that. My name is Jopa. Have a good one, and I'll catch you all later.